New Eagles news, your news, house, computers, DVD, long, low, box office results, weekend, what's up, guys, back from your news, let's get to it. Alright, this week isn't very promising to me. Well, maybe. So far, I'm mixed on it. Great. Alright, new releases, okay. Um, every one, every, each one listed on here is coming out on the 22nd, I believe. Okay, this thing is just having some issues responding again. Ugh. You know what, I'm just gonna switch to my iPhone, and those are my headphones that fell on the floor. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm having issues with that iPad. Fucking great, huh? I know what I've had for like, what, a year right now? Fucking hell. Yeah, I know I'm getting mad all the time. Yeah, each one's coming out on April 22nd, so... Bye-bye, piece of... Bye-bye, piece of garbage, I don't need you for now. And let's get back to this. Alright, the first one is The Huntsman Winter's War. This is a sequel to Snow White and Huntsman, which came out in 2012. And this one has a pretty stacked ensemble cast. Now, oh, fucking hell. Sorry, I don't know, so my, my internet's been shit, too. Can't come me a break, huh? Alright, this stars Charlie Theron, Chris Hemsworth, Rob Brydon, Jessica Chastain, Nick Frost, Emily Blunt, Sheridan Smith, uh, Sam Claflin. If I get any, any names wrong, compo, proper pronunciation. This is a 16%, 55 reviews. The Huntsman Winter's War is visually arresting and boasts a, vis a stellar cast, but neither enough to recommend this entirely unnecessary sequel. Fantastic. Oh no, yeah, if I was ever going to do a recommendation for having Superman, I recommend checking out Curiosity at best. If not, just wait till you can rent it. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I never saw Snow White and the Huntsman, and to be honest, this really wasn't getting my attention. I just thought, whatever. And the reviews? I guess I'm out. Sorry. Next one. This is uh, Elvis and Nixon. This is uh, stars Michael Shannon, Kevin Spacey, Alex Pettifer, Johnny Knoxville, Colin Hanks, Evan Peters, Tracy Letts, Tate Donovan, Ashley Benson. Uh, okay. It has one good review so far. And actually, the script is co-written by Carrie Elvis. Interesting. I don't know who all the, I don't know who the other writers are. You can like me in the comment section below. Lisa Johnson directs this. She really doesn't have any, doesn't have any good stuff. I don't know. Her filmography has been kind of hit and miss. One hit and one miss, basically, by critics. Um, I saw the trailer, and I guess it looks pretty promising. It looks kind of funny. You know, I mean, like, you know, it means involved, like, you know, I'm, you know, the king of rock and roll shows up, shows up to request meeting with, you know, Nixon. Yay. I don't know much about the actual story, but I mean, interesting. Maybe it'll be good. I don't know. I'll give it hope because of the cast. I mean, this is a great cast. Michael Shannon, Kevin Spacey. What more do you want me to say? Next one. Ta Tale of Tales. Um, okay. This stars Selma Hayek, Vincent Castle, John C. Riley, Toby Jones. Other people. 81% 32 reviews. Also has, like, Directed by Matteo Gar like, uh, Garone. I don't know much about this movie, though I guess the reviews kind of catch my attention. I guess. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Being totally honest here. Oh, it catch my attention. I'll check it out. Next one is The Meddler. This thing is... I don't know what's my internet today. It's directed by Laureen Scafaria. Stars Susan Sarandon, Rose Byrne, J.K. Simmons, Cicely Strong, Jared Carmichael, Jason Ritter, Lucy Bunch, uh, other people. 82% 11 reviews. Didn't see a trailer, don't know much about it, but I guess the reviews are so far pretty promising, so maybe I'll check it out. We'll wait and see. Next one, A Hologram for the King. This is written and directed by Tom Tykwer. Tykwer. Whatever. Uh, it stars Tom Hanks uh, and other Ben Wishaw, also. It's also based like on Dave Eggers' novel, the same name. Okay. I mean, I saw the trailer. It looked too, it looked kind of promising. And you know, we all love Tom Hanks. He's so likable as a he's one of those likable actors out there. I mean, I know Tom. T I know Tykwer has some good film, some good films to his name. Like has some good films to his name, like Run, Lola, Run. 
He also directed a segment of Paris Je t'aime. Also, he made the divisive Cloud Atlas. I haven't seen it, but I kind of want to check it out because of its amp, because I heard so much about its ambition. So that alone kind of interests me. One day I'll watch it. I don't know. I hope for the best. Because, I mean, actually, Tyquer, I think it's like, his, I think it's Hanks' second collaboration with Tyquer, like, after Cloud Atlas. Interesting. Uh, I hope for the best. Next one is Compadres. This next was, like, I think, like, an action comedy. Eric Roberts, Omar, Shapiro, other people I don't know. 45% of them reviews. Didn't see a trailer. Do I think it's playing in my theater? And I'd say I'm not really excited for it. Doesn't really interest me. The reviews kind of turn me off, also. Sorry. Next one, Holidays. This stars. Oh, what the hell? Like, who the hell's direct? Is that Seth Green? Is this like an anthology film? It is an anthology film. Okay, it has people like uh, Kevin Smith, Gary Shore, Scott Stewart, Kevin Kolsch, and Dennis Widmeyer, Sarah Dina Smith, Nicholas McCarthy, Adam Egypt Mortimer, and Anthony Scott Burns. And it has people like. Uh, I swear I saw Seth Green there, though maybe I could be wrong on that. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I need, I don't know. 67% six reviews. I guess it's promising, but I don't know. Anthology films are not, anthology films can be like hidden mess with some people, and I don't know. Let's hope for the best. Next one, Men and Chicken. 75%, 12 reviews. Anders Thomas Jensen. That sounds familiar. Okay, and just has some films to it. Has some films to his name that are very good. Okay, Mads Mikkelsen. Uh, other people I don't really know. I don't know. I guess it kind of gets my attention, but I can't really get excited for it. Maybe I'll find it. Maybe I'll find it check it out. I don't know. All right. Oh shit. Next one is Nina. It stars Zoe Saldana, David Oyelowo, uh, Mike Epps, Ella Thomas, Ella Joyce. <laughs> it has four views posted, three good, three bad, one good. No, oh. not not my ear again. That's kind of sad because of the talent here. Zoe Saldana, David Oyelowo. These guys are these people have really proved themselves. Saldana with you know Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, Oyelowo with, you know, Selma. And also, I liked him in the most violent year, though he really stands out the most in Selma. He got snubbed. I don't know, what the review has really kind of been turning me off, so, sorry. Next, last one, Precious Cargo. Stars Bruce Willis, Claire Forlani. I don't know much about it. It's like an action film, I guess. And Willis really hasn't done anything worthy of merit, so it's kind of upsetting. Really upsetting. <sighs> Alright, let's go to the new DVD releases. Uh, this is actually getting out hard to me. They don't even show like on the DVD, on the DVD part of my on the Flickster app. But now they're showing they can show it on in the news tab, which is I don't I don't, I don't know how that makes sense. Alright, they're all coming out tomorrow as usual. First one is Lady the Lady in the Van. Sorry, it seems to take a long time to respond. God, I hate this thing. Sorry. Alright, Lady in the Van. I'm just gonna go with uh, The Revenant, Ip Man 3, Fifty Shades of Black. Yeah, great. Fantastic. Hold on, I'm gonna go through some. Sorry, this one's gonna be a little bit messier because it's just not very balanced. Yeah, okay, about involving the Revenants, which is directed by Alejandro Gonzalez and Naritu. Stars, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hardy, Domhnall Gleeson, Will Poulter. And you know, involving, you know, the fact that involving, you know, involving like Hugh Glass being mauled by a bear and unfortunately he's left for dead. His son is killed and he decides to go, it's a fight for survival and a revenge story. Really good movie. The cinematography is some of the best I've ever seen. It was just absolutely stunning. They did a lot of long takes. They didn't cut a lot, which I was really surprised about. Dude, I don't know what else to say about the film. It hasn't already been said. Is it perfect? Do I, do I love it, though? No. Can I say why someone loves it? Yes. 
I mean, there's a lot of worthy. I mean, this stuff is worthy of merit. God damn it, I fucking hate this thing. This thing is really. I don't know. I think it's my internet to blame, but also it could be this. I don't know. I, I get mad a lot. As usual. This is really gonna be a. Man, I really hate today. A lot. Eighty-two percent. Three hundred, three hundred reviews. As starkly beautiful as it is harshly uncompromising, Revenant uses Leonardo DiCaprio's comedic performance as fuel for an absorbing drama that offers punishing challenges and rich rewards. You got that right, but it wasn't hundred percent. But it wasn't perfect though. Yeah, the CGI was pretty bad. It looked pretty fake. And as intense as that bear scene is, it still isn't always one hundred percent convincing because of the CGI. They could put more money into it. Will Poulter really surprise me? Uh, the cinematography is just amazing. Seriously, I don't know what else to say about that. I mean, what else more do I have to say about the fact that Emmanuel Lubezki is just one of the best cinematographers working in the business today? Seriously, I mean, not only the use of natural light was fan was was a very good was a perfect touch to the film to make it much to make it feel much more realistic and you really feel more like you're in that setting. But also, geez, it was just good. I don't know what else to say. I film. I just thought it was perfect in that aspect. Technically, on a technical basis, it's almost flawless, except for the CGI. Acting, great. Will Poulter really surprised me, actually. That guy can really act. I'd like to see more of him in dramas. Uh, and boy, am I so happy that DiCaprio finally won that Oscar. It took him too long, but he finally won. Can't say anything more about that. Thank God you won, and your speech was so worth it. Well, your speech was great, and we will, and, we'll, and many of you will be following that example. Well, following your, following your hope, following what you... You understand what I'm saying. Some people are taking that message to heart and are really trying and are trying their best to make a difference in the world. Uh, Lane Van, this is directed by Nicholas Hitzner, stars Alex Jennings, Maggie Smith, James Corden, Donna Cooper, Alan Bennett, Jim Broadbent, 93%, 120 reviews, led by a marvelous performance from Maggie Smith, Lady in the Van Rings, poignant, often hilarious insight from its fact-based source material. Uh, okay, I haven't seen the film, I kind of wanted to, but I never got lucky. Maybe one day I'll be able to see it, but I don't know. Hopefully we'll get lucky one day. All right, let's look at the Ip Man 3. Yeah, they have three of these now. This has an 81% for the reviews. Ip Man isn't the most tightly plotted biopic a comic fan could ask for, but the fight scenes are fun to watch, and at times the drama is even genuinely poignant. Of course, you have Donnie Yen again. You also have Mike Tyson. Interesting choice. I've never seen any Ip Man films. Maybe one day I will, but for now, we'll wait and see. 50 Shades of Black. Eh, great. I already real. I already thought. I already thought Fifty Shades of Grey was awful. Why do I? Have to, am I gonna have to watch this? Seven percent, forty-two reviews. Widely erratic, even for a spoof movie. Fifty Shades of Black bears the unfortunate distinction of offering fewer laughs than the unintentionally funny film it's trying to lampoon. Okay, so you're trying to be funny, and and Fifty Shades of Grey shouldn't be so serious, but unfortunately it comes off as funny. Wow, that's that's just pathetic. One more do I have to say hasn't already been said. I don't want to watch this film. I don't. Though renting it from Gamefly, I'm not paying for it, but here I get the points. Yeah. Do I really want to watch it? Probably would find a worse film than Allegiant, but at the same time, forget it. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. My health has been bothering lately. I have no idea why. <laughs> Hmm. It's wrong. It's Michael Titus is the director. Did I pronounce it right? Titus, Titus. <laughs> I don't care. Started Marlon Mar Wayans, Callie Hawk, Fred Willard. Oh, poor guy. Andrew Bachelor, King Batch. Uh, Mike Epps, Jane Seymour, Florence Henderson. I, I, I don't care. I really don't. You know, these spoof films really just don't, these people don't seem to really care about this, about really making a truly funny spoof film. And I heard this movie just tries to throw in way too much stuff and see what sticks. And unfortunately, a lot of it falls flat. 
I notice anything else? I'm gonna run some just in case, because I mean, seriously, what is with that DVD, that DVD tab? It was a mess. Hold on. Did Northern North come out to, come out tomorrow? Does North 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 come out tomorrow? Oh god, it does. Yeah, Northern North. That's great. Uh, Anime film that was supposed to come out direct DVD, but it got theatrical release. Eight percent pioneering feat in the field of twerking polar bear animation, but bear, but clearly retrograde in every other respect. Northern North should only be screened in case of parental emergency. Great. Fifty-nine reviews. Great. Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider is Kenny. Wait, PG-13. Rob Schneider is a carrot. Wait, PG-13. I don't know if it is, but I mean, there is like a movie parody that he did turn to a carrot. Bill Nye. Bill Nye. Whatever. whatever. Josh, Jess Harnell. Debbie Darberry. Great. Gabriel Iglesias. Ken Jung. Talent being wasted. Fucking great. Yeah, 8%. Why the hell would I watch this? No. Mm. 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 Alright, the next one is also Misconduct. This has 11%. 20 reviews, no consensus written. Has people like Josh Demel, Al Pacino, Anthony Hopkins, Julia Stiles, Alice Eve, Glenn Powell. Yeah, the reviews alone just turn me off. Why the hell would I watch this? Alright, is that the rest of them? I'm gonna check. Yep. So let's get to the box office results. Yay, we all... Yeah, who cares about that anymore? Yeah, I know, but seriously guys, I've had a pretty... Shitty day. The flooding just annoys me. Number one, The Jungle Book. $103,261,464. Hopefully I can see it this weekend. Man, that's a hell of a debut. Damn. How does it make worldwide? $293,161,464. Wow, already made its budget back. I do want to see this. I mean, the reviews sold me. And really, I was kind of jumping on the bandwagon that people were excited for this. I was kind of jumping on that bandwagon. I was thinking, hoping for the best because of the talent involved. But I had some worries. The reviews? Yeah, I'm excited for it. Number two, Bar Show the Next Cut. $20,242,415. Wow, it's a pretty good opening, actually. And I have to say, the reviews are actually selling me. Yeah, it's... I'm really surprised at the reviews it actually got. I want to check it out, actually. Number three, The Boss, $9,958,855. Well, I want to check this out. The reviews alone turn me off. Four, Bambi Superman Dom Justice, $9,028,256. Yeah, good. Great. I don't care. Yeah, that movie was really disappointing. There was such a letdown for people. You could have tried harder, people. You could have learned from your mistakes. You had three years. Well, you probably, well I mean, yeah, you had three years. And that's the best you could do? Are you kidding me? I'm more angry what the film wasn't than what, this, than what the film was. If you get what I'm saying. I'm tired. Five, Zootopia. $8,142,641. Yeah, I can't get enough of this movie. Boy, I fall in love with it. Six, Colonel. $5,767,278. Yeah, I, I don't care. The reviews suck. Seven, might be for free wedding too. Three million, two fifty eight thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. Sorry. Can't get excited for it. Eight, your goals are half of one million nine hundred thirty eight thousand five seventy eight dollars. Success, whatever. Nine, God's not dead too. One million seven hundred eighteen thousand three hundred three dollars. Whatever. Ten, nine, the sky. Huh, same way as last week. Interesting. One million, five hundred fifty three thousand eighty three dollars. Thank God I saw it. 11, Hardcore Henry. Jesus, this one suffered a major down, major change, major like a drop. Negative 71.7%, shit. 
One million four hundred forty-five thousand three hundred twenty-six dollars. Man, it was at number five last week. How the hell do you go from that to this? <sighs> Shit. <coughs> Sorry. Well, the Order Series of Legion. One million three hundred seventy thousand six hundred thirty dollars. Forget this franchise. That thing really bombed. Not surprised. Um, you know what? I'm probably just gonna leave it up at that. Hold on. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, uh, if you want to check out all the box art results, like I'll put a link to the chart in the description below. Anyways, guys, that's movie news for this week. Yeah, my phone fell on the ground. Great. Comment below. Uh, what do you think? Waiting the new releases, are you gonna see any of them? Are you gonna skip any of them? Waiting the DVD releases, are you gonna rent any of them, buy any of them, or just skip them entirely? What do you think of the box arts results? Do you have any predictions? If so, put in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. Grand channel for more videos.